you are watching Access LaPorte County, Channel 97. Coming up next is the April 18th, 2023 meeting of the Michigan City Common Council. You can find more information for this meeting by visiting www.accesslaportecounty.org. Good evening and welcome to our April 18th meeting of the Michigan City Common Council. If everyone could please silence all electronic devices and stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and a silent prayer. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, and on the God, indivisible, for all. Ms. Nile, on the roll call, please. Mr. Dabney? Present. Mr. Fitzpatrick? Present. Mr. Mack? Present. Ms. Deitch? Present. Mr. Don Presablonski? Present. Mr. Paul Presablonski? Present. Mr. Simmons? Present. Ms. Jagus? Present. And Ms. Tillman? Present. We have nine present and no one absent. We have a quorum on to the approval of the minutes of our regular April 4, 2023 meeting and executive session labor relations, April 5th. 2023. Motion to approve. Support. Second. I have a motion to approve by Councilman Don Presidentsky and second by Councilman Jane Simmons. Ms. Nile, on the vote, please. Mr. Mack? Yay. Ms. Deitch? Aye. Mr. Don Presidentsky? Aye. Mr. Simmons? Aye. Ms. Jagus? Aye. Mr. Paul Presidentsky? Aye. Ms. Tillman? Aye. Mr. Dabney? Aye. And Mr. Fitzpatrick? Aye. We have nine in favor and no one opposed. Uh, reports of standing committees. Finance Committee. Thank you, Mr. President. The Michigan City Finance Committee meeting met today, April, uh, April 18, 2023. Um, the Michigan City Riverboat Claims Docket for April 18, 2023. Riverboat Fund number 2235, $15,415.16. Riverboat EFT fund number two two three five zero dollars. Boyd Development EFT fund number two five zero four. Total claims fifteen thousand four hundred fifteen dollars sixteen cents. Those claims was for current electric in the amount of three hundred eight dollars ninety two cents. Laporte Chrysler Inc six thousand four hundred thirty five dollars. Waymeyer APS Inc. doing business as Waymeyer $8,671.24, totaling $15,415.16 in claims. The claims was approved by um was, was approved. And we also Um, for the city of Michigan City, the Riverboat Statement of Cash Position, fiscal year to date, April 17, 2023, in the balance in the amount of $5,453,885.06. Also in attendance was Controller Hawksmaster, and she did um, go over the um, purchase orders, which was already approved in our prior budget and there was also conversation in regards to the ordinance on second reading that is coming before us tonight on the creating sections 2-419 in the city michigan city municipal code to establish criteria for the utilization of the public safety lit funds thank you councilwoman uh claims docket April 18, 2023, fund 2235 Riverboat claims, $15,415.16. Fund 2504 Boyd Development, $0 for a total claims of $15,415.16. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Support. I have a motion to approve uh, by Councilman Don Presidentsky and second by Councilwoman Tracy Tillman. Uh, Ms. Nyla, on the vote, please. 
Ms. Deitch? Aye. Mr. Don Kresoblonski? Aye. Mr. Simmons? Aye. Ms. Jagas? Aye. Mr. Paul Kresoblonski? Aye. Ms. Tillman? Aye. Mr. Dabney? Aye. Mr. Fitzpatrick? Aye. And Mr. Mack? Aye. We have nine in favor and no one opposed. Thank you, Ms. Nyla. Uh, Riverboat Board Development Purchase Orders for April 18, 2023. Riverboat, $1,759,824.82. Boy development total three hundred and fifty five thousand. Uh, we don't need to prove those. Those already done. Our uh, reports from boards and commissions. Our uh, reports of special or select committees. Reports from mayor or other city officers and departments. We have clearance holds of economic development. Nobody else came before me. So. <laughs> Good evening, uh, Mr. President and city council members. I'm here to give you an annual report from the uh, Eagle of Agency, uh, Clarence Knowles, ADCMC director. Um, I've got a couple of slides I want to uh, run through with you and uh, then open up for questions. Um, we're happy to report that, uh, you know, we've been in business 25 years working with the city. Um, it's been a great relationship. Um, I'm, I guess, the uh, port director with the agency and uh we've done a lot with our work with the city and the community so we'd like to see that continue hopefully another 25 years um uh last year's economic impact and you should have a copy of our report in your in binder uh that lists all the projects um was over 258 million dollars um different projects coming to the city and so those are listed in your packet. Um, we've got um, the city, I, I tell people, has been discovered by a lot of developers. Uh, we had a breakfast last week. Uh, we had folks from Atlanta, New York, uh, Milwaukee, uh, Chicago land, uh, of course, Indianapolis, that South Bend. So uh, there's a lot of folks looking to invest in our community, which is, which is awesome. And uh, as housing is a big um, issue, and so um, that I'm hoping we can address, you know, in more than one ways, but um, we celebrated uh, Burnham Brewing opening up in uh, an Asia downtown. We think that would be a great addition to our community. Uh, they've been here for almost uh, 12 years, uh, been out operating in off uh, Fryer Road, and uh, so we worked within the last five years to get in a, a location in our downtown. A uh, great project for the community would be the Health Link uh, Clinic. Um, they are currently um, uh, behind the Ivy Tech building off Franklin. Uh, they broke ground last uh, October, and they're hoping to be open um, uh, this this uh, next year. This year, um, great project. Uh, just so people are aware, there's over eighteen thousand people in Laporte County who don't have access to healthcare. So if you look at some of the offerings they're offering. Um, they'll be working with a lot of emergency residents who don't have access to health care. And so um, they're a federal health clinic, so they serve everybody who walks in. And it's, it's done by income guidelines. Um, one of the great things about this project is they're behind Ivy Tech. And uh, so you can get your training at Ivy Tech and walk across the parking lot to get your, your, your clinicals. And so, and so the hospitals are excited about it because it'll, it'll make for a great partnership. Uh, one of the projects everybody's talking about is, of course, the, the uh, um, train station. Um, we are excited because they've got most of their funding in place. They'll be looking for uh, contractors, trying to get bids um, returned. And, of course, the numbers are changing every time they go for a bid. Um, but they're hoping to break run um, June, July of this year. And uh, they've gotten their funding from the state, and they're trying to get the bond paperwork uh, put together so they can, they can come before the council at some point. Uh, but great project uh, to offer, offer 220 units. The goal is to have this fully completed by uh, spring of 2025. Um, one of the things that asked from the city is that when they get uh, the first three floors built, to have temporary CEOs because that way they can start filling up the building as they have to go every three floors. So by the time they get to the 12th floor, there'll probably be roughly 200 people living there, 200 plus people living downtown. So you'll see a lot of change downtown. Um, keep in mind, uh, progress brings problems. So, roughly, five people will be working at that site. 
every day. So uh, there'll be a lot of traffic jams, sprains, and a few other things, um, Penton, Penton Franklin. Um, but um, when it's finished, um, nationally, they look at two, two and a half persons per unit average. So you're roughly looking at roughly 420 people um, at, at the station. So your beautiful project. Um, we had a breakfast last week and the developer was a speaker and he talked about why he thinks, why he is here in Michigan City, or why he's spending $240 million in Michigan City. And uh, he said he's living here for 25 years, drove to work back and forth and always wonder why, you know, couldn't do anything here. And so he thinks the right time and he thinks he's, he's betting big on Michigan City. And so that's why he's doing this. But this would be a, a great project for a community. Again, it has two hotel flags, um, a condo project, and it's bringing a lot of new people toward downtown. And they're looking to have a uh, public space on the fourth floor, which is up the garage. It could be a swimming pool open to the public, and they're hoping to turn into a skating rink during the winter. So, um, so it'd be a great amenity for the waterfront in the future. That's 150 condos. So again, using the two, two and a half average numbers, that's roughly 300 people. That site would be uh, roughly 800 people working on that site for the next three years. So again, uh, lots of activity, people looking to buy food, shop uh, in our community in the next uh, three years. Uh, corner of uh, eight in Michigan, this project is the workforce housing project that we've talked about. They are currently um, have an application to the state for tax credits. So to qualify as a workforce project, you have to have 4% tax credit, which lower the cost of rentals. So let's say a, a one bedroom unit is $1,400. They're gonna charge up to a thousand. So you want to make sure that people who are uh, want to work in downtown and live in downtown can actually afford to live downtown. And so uh, we try to make sure this project gets the funding it needs from the state uh, to make that work. Uh, one of the great projects we've got coming in, in the pipeline is a uh, uh, single family subdivision uh, called North Paws Road in Woodlands. Uh, this will be before the, the uh, planning commission in probably two weeks. Uh, but we, um, Four years ago, we went and documented every piece of property in the city we could use for residential development. And we started marketing to all the developers within probably 200 miles. And so uh, we finally got a hit out of Michigan. These guys do about 1,000 homes a year. So the goal right now is to um, put in all the water and sewer lines uh, this fall and break ground on their first, first phase uh, next spring. The goal is to have 33 homes built hopefully by, by next fall. And so... They have multiple options, and the good, the good thing is they're starting range between 270 to 325, which I think we think is a great number because that's our middle market we don't have for right now in Michigan City. Everything is really low or really high. And so um, so they'll be coming to, I guess you guys will be getting the um, application soon once it goes to the Planning Commission uh, to come before this body. But uh, from what everything we've seen, they're great developers. They pay their own way, and they want to be here. So. Uh, this pro this project is part of the land that was annexed, roughly, I think, three years ago, four years ago. And we are, would like to see water and sewer on that soon. We've gotten a number of people knocking on our doors and they walked away because uh, we don't have the water and sewer. So hopefully soon that will become a reality for us. Uh, TDD boundary. Um, those of you who have uh, been involved with Double Track uh, probably are aware that July 1st of this year, uh, Michigan City will be one of six cities in the state that has uh, these boundaries. And what this does is it helps to grow around the train station area. Um, one of the things about this is the MICTI and the RDA has a studies done in this whole area. And what they're trying to do is create a TIF that will pay off some of the debt from the state, but also allow the cities to get some funding for what the growth in the future. So. We've looked at the properties in those areas and uh, go ahead. Um, also the RDA has done some studies and they're looking at roughly uh, between 3,500 3, to 5,000 people living there in the next 10 years. There's based on land use patterns, based on whether they're condos, apartments, single family, duplex, commercial. So that number changes based on what's built. So, but that's the projection. Um, Another great project in the pipeline, um, knock on wood. If you guys have any friends in the Senate, we need to get some phone calls made, but uh, we're trying to get this project funded. 
uh, $25 million. Uh, don't know how many people are involved with Ivy Tech, but um, great community um, school, and uh, we need to have it look better. Um, it's an old building, I think over two thirds not being used. And so, um, or employers are telling us they need to have training in our community, and whether that's manufacturing, healthcare, uh, business. And so, we'd like to see a better building in our community. And so, the, our chancellor, uh, Mr. Axel Sikorsky, he may be here in the room, but he's been fighting for us to get that done, and uh, but he needs some help. So if you guys have any friends at the Senate, um, we're at the final stage of the funding right now, and I think they're meeting this week. So we're trying to get that this funded. So there's a lot of people competing for dollars across the state. We were number two in the system. We think we dropped to number four. So there's a lot of you know, wheeling and dealing going on behind the scenes. <laughs> so, but uh, we'd like to make sure this gets funded and hopefully we'll have a new compass uh, there in the future. So Market Mall, this is a project everybody asks about. Um, we, we did this render with the commission about uh, two years ago. Um, we've been knocking on doors of um, large developers. Some have asked questions, asked for information. We send it back out. Some people go dark, some people call us. Um, I tell people it's a five-year project to get started because um, for anybody to get involved, it takes a year just to go through all the leases, the environmentals, and so some people after six months, eight months, they decide to walk away. Uh, but it's going to be somebody with deep pockets. I know um, there's one being done in Skokie, Illinois. Uh, they're spending $150 million to go in, knock it down, or knock parts of it down, put new roads in and really start over. So it's going to take a lot of money. So we've got the folks in Los Angeles, Detroit, um, getting some interest. Nobody's really bitten the bullet yet. Um, but uh, we got to keep knocking on doors. So early child care education, something we got involved with last year. Uh, we had a, there was a study done by Work One that showed over 2,000 families in LaPorte County have no access to child care. Uh, of which 600 was based in Michigan City. So we started looking at how we can help. And so we've been working with a group called IFF out of um, um, Indianapolis and trying to figure out how to help mom and pops because those are the ones taking care of the kids. And so we've been trying to find ways to improve their accounting, um, uh, insurance capacity, but also training um, because a lot of them are lower paid. And so how do we get people back in, into that field? not only um, make it child care, but make it early education. So we are, our MCAS has come to the, to the forefront and they'll be offering um, a curriculum for training that way the, the, the kids can learn how to count and spell and all that and before they get to elementary. So we're excited about this part because we know there's better child care, cheaper child care, um, people will go back to work. And so um, people are calling us, telling us they need peak bodies, but really um, in your packet will show you how many people are looking for work in LaPorte County, Michigan City. We've got more jobs than people. The last three months, we've got over 3,000 jobs in Michigan City. We've got 1,200 people looking for, for work. So obviously we have more jobs than people. So. Um, one of the projects that got started late last year and it will go into the next three years is uh, Brookings um, Institute and LISC. And this is a big deal for Michigan City. For those of you who don't know who Brookings is, they are right case studies for the White House uh, Congress. And so we're excited that they're in Michigan City. Uh, we were very fortunate to be selected as one of the three small cities as guinea pigs. Um, typically, they work for the big cities, the Chicago's, the Philadelphia's, and New York. So they're here to help um, in our community. Uh, one of the things they want to look at, what are the highest um, poverty areas in Michigan City? And how can we start making change in those communities in the next three years? And so we've been having meetings. We're having a community meeting this Thursday at 6 p.m. at the Hope Center. Everybody is welcome to come out. Um, the goal is how can we provide more economic development for those communities in Michigan City? And what they're doing is take the responses, help with the playbook, but they're not going to walk away. They're saying, we want to help you to find funding to work with the small government, your government, to help you figure out how to make this stuff work. So that's the exciting part. You can do a lot of studies and put it on the shelf. But for them to stay on the next three years and help us out, that's the best part of this deal. And this is another national nonprofit. They can they do loans. 
They can build houses, build buildings, buy land. They know how to do all that stuff. So we're excited that they're here working with us to help the community do all that stuff happen. So uh, this uh, Thursday, 6 p.m. Help Center, you're all welcome to come out. Uh, those are areas that were, that were selected. And if you look on the bottom in your packet, you'll see why. Uh, those are the highest poverty areas in Michigan City. And so, you know, we, we're betting up a whole lot, but uh, we try to make sure we can make changes in those communities and make impact. And it is community driven. So there's not us or the city doing it. You know, it's, it's what the residents of those areas want to see happen. We've got a job fair coming up uh, May 4th at uh, Blue Chip Casino. Um, we, we've got 40 companies already signed up. We've been doing a lot of marketing. It'll be on the radio next, next week and next two weeks, but we're hoping to get some people job because as you can tell, there's everybody, every employer in, in Michigan City, Lafayette County is looking for people right now. Retail, hospitality, manufacturing, healthcare, city government. I mean, everybody is looking for people right now. So. And so we're looking at skill enhancement dollars. Uh, work one is looking at how to get people trained because some people may want a job, but when they go look for a job, they say, well, you're not qualified, which I hear a lot. So how do we get people trained to get those jobs? And then also people who are working, how do we enhance their skills so they can keep their job and do better and make better money? So again, uh, work one has funding right now for that. So we're trying to make sure those, those dollars are put in Michigan City. Um, through different agencies in the, in the community and also have a door people can make a phone call and get the help they need. So our object, objective for the next three years is housing, housing, housing. Um, that's a big issue right now, uh, workforce housing, but also doing rehab, uh, something we have not done very much of in Michigan City. And so we try to figure out how to work with the city government to make sure that happens. We have a lot of older, older housing stock in Michigan City, how we get funding from the feds, the state, to make those things happen. Um, workforce development, I mentioned, it's a big issue right now. Uh, market mall, uh, building the business park infrastructure, entrepreneurship, and also child care. In terms of um, the next, let's say, five years, uh, challenges for us, means that public safety will, will be a big deal. Uh, the perception of safety is a big deal for any, any community, so we got to work on that. Um, industrial buildings. We have no building right now for sale that's large enough for a large company in Michigan City. We had one building that was for sale. We had six bidders, and we lost a company with 200 jobs, 20 bucks an hour out of California because they didn't get the bid. So that's the market we're in. Um, the former Federal Mobil has just been bought, and uh, we have a company who wants to go in there and uh, probably spend a couple million dollars to get it uh, spruced up and um, out of out of Milwaukee. But they are they are they are investor owned company and what they do is they go in and rehab the rehab the building and then they lease it out to other companies. So uh, go back. Annexation plan, making sure we can um, control our agenda for of our city. Um, attraction for talent. We have we need to get people here who want to work and um, um, uh, more people who uh, for this company we have in business city. Um, the prison uh, that's been a big discussion um, they were, during the, our um, meetings the last few months, what's going to happen to that in the next 20 years? Uh, and we know West, Westville has a prison that's being new, that's being built. Old going to be demolished, probably a 10-year project. What's going to happen to the one in Michigan City? It's a big question everybody's asking. Um, Single-family residential, new and rehab, affordable workforce market rate. Um, we need to figure out how to work on rehab in our community and also uh, the Brooks Institute LISC Small Business Lab we're working on right now. How do we improve the areas of the city that are not, you know, doing so well? Because these areas, they have one, one uh, factor, Dangjiang, which is probably next five years, over a billion dollar investment. And these areas are on downtown. So how do we make sure they get a piece of the pie? Because we can project what a billion, a billion dollars being spent in downtown in the next five years with all these projects we got in the pipeline. So. Question, comments? Um, <clears throat> Mr. Holtz, uh, looking at the uh, poverty rate uh, page that uh, I guess it would look, seem to me that we have a, about a 25% mean poverty rate 
in our community. And what are we, is there anything actually going on to try to bring those numbers down with uh, work with work one and, you know, the schools and whatever might be trying to bring this down because I'm focusing on, you know, this Midtown number because then I'm looking at your the map here and I was wondering how far down that the Midtown section went because if I remember correctly that there was supposed to be a plan for Midtown and it was never brought forward out of the planning department. Well, we are working not really on a planning document. We were working more for an economic document. So everything you just mentioned, we're trying to incorporate workforce, um, money for training, because the only way you can get a good job is through training, whether it's a union job or uh, working for a manufacturer, but you need to have training. So we're trying to figure out how do you get dollars um, in those areas with the schools, uh, AK Smith. So that's one aspect. Um, the other aspect is transportation. Some people can't get to work because of how hard also our system is set up. So how do we fix that in, in the future? So we talk about how to make those things better, but it's not going to be one agency. It's multiple agencies talking to each other in, uh, to make the areas improve. Okay, and, and the... Uh, so the, the, with this, the Brookings Institute, you know, there's other cities participating in that as I read this... Uh, brochure three um what exactly is the goal to i see this affordable housing food insecurity access to jobs which you already said we have what uh a overabundancy of wanted jobs to fill so are people not being like given the information or you know how how do how do we get to this point and affordable housing always keeps coming up. Has there been any discussion about creating, trying to create some kind of consortium, uh, consortium that the city and a not-for-profit take control of these homes and, and start reconditioning them instead of tearing them, keep on tearing them down? I asked I ask four questions there. So, <laughs> um, first one, um, food insecurity. Um, in a lot of areas you see with the high poverty, they don't have a supermarket. And when they do, it's not the best food. So the question is, how do we either get a supermarket or a mobile food in those areas that has high quality foods or better quality foods? So that's one discussion. Um, access to job. That could be transportation, could be training, could be childcare. So they, you know, that there's not one one issue. It could, it could be it could be multiple issues. Um, so how do you tackle those? Which agencies in the city, the port, or the region can help us tackle those issues? Um, in terms of um, housing, um, we work right now with a nonprofit to identify empty land to build on. Um, but um, the rehab issue is something we've been talking about because instead of knocking them down, can we get federal dollars to fix them up? There is money there to fix them up. We got to figure out how to do it in a very efficient way. Uh, and that's typically work with a nonprofit. And then the city got to hire more inspectors because when you get federal money, um, they have to be inspected by the city to make that happen. Like a project manager go out and make sure it's been done right because you can't put somebody in a house that's you know not yeah. you know, done, done done right. What with that being said, on this project manager is couldn't that be handled by the individual that manages the CBDG grant? Uh, typically, he or she will manage two or three project managers because they, this person got to be out there documenting and work with the contractors. So I mean, it, it could be done, so it's feasible. It's feasible, and part of the money you get can be used to offset the cost of that person, too. So, And on, on those plans that are developed, are you ever contacted about those plans for uh, when they... Uh, put their plan together on the grant money from the feds? Well, I'm not really involved in city housing, but I'm, 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 just, I'm taking yeah. a look at it now more, more um, deeper. And just so you're aware, um, you have a plan that's updated every five years. 
And so the plan ends this year, 2023. So you should be getting, uh, there should be a process sometime this summer to update the plan. Well, well, thank you, so, Clarence. Thank you, Councilman. Any other questions? Well, thank you. And keep doing the thank you. work you're doing. We appreciate it. I wanted to my staff before I leave. Uh, yeah. Lily and Caroline are here. I think I have some board members here from the EDC board. Uh, wave your hand, please. I don't know where you're all at. So, there you go. so thank you for being here. So. Good evening, Council President, all Council Members, Doug Legault, Michigan City Fire Chief. I want to give you a quick report for March. 344 incident calls, 10 of them were fires, 273 medical calls, 8 hazardous condition calls, 6 service calls, 42 good intent calls, 3 false alarm calls, and one special incident type. We, uh, seven Narcans were used in the city of Michigan City. Um, my apologies to controller. I forgot to get this to you today, my fault. Um, just a reminder, the fire department is doing a, another testing period coming up for applications. We take applications year round. The cutoff date is April 30th. So if you know somebody, Please have them get their application in at City Hall or the administration building. You can get it on the e Michigan City website, print it out from that, fill it out, and then get it turned in, please. Uh, if you know of anybody, please contact them. Um, the truck committee has met twice, and I've asked them to uh, be able to give you guys an indication on what they are wanting to do by next council meeting. So hopefully they will have something that we can bring to you. Uh, and the information that Councilman Don Prezwinski and Councilman Paul Prezwinski has asked for, I am working on. I have it almost completed. I've been in contact with Sentinel, the uh, repair facility that does major repairs on the T-Rex, the Rosemar T-Rex. He says he's going to have the complete history of it for me by Friday, from 2015 all the way up till we, we have the last two to three years records right now, and I can get that information to you tomorrow if you want it, but I was going to wait till Friday to get the complete history of it. No, uh, Friday's, Friday's okay. And just for the other council members and for the public, uh, what we're talking about, the uh, the T-Rex, the million point three dollar fire truck that was purchased a couple of years ago, uh, seems to be, in my mind, having a lot of uh, maintenance issues and just trying to get a uh, handle on how much money we're actually spending on uh, this truck and if the city needs to go in a different direction with this uh, with this piece of equipment. So Friday, uh, Friday will be fine, Chief. And then just one more thing, you know, we were talking about that Ruby Woods mm -hmm. uh, incident that happened and you said that you were gonna send out a report on what took place there. That's what the tent catching on fire and yes, you know, we talked about it yesterday morning. Yes, sir. Uh, I'll get that to you. I've talked to uh, Fire Marshal Jeff Brewer and he's given me some information. So let me get with the police department and see what they have. Okay. And I'll get it to you. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Councilman Paul Pilgrimsky. Uh, thank you. Chief Legault. You know, I've been tracking this uh, situation with the T-Rex, and uh, we had several discussions about the equipment failures of that particular vehicle. And uh, at the last, I believe the last council meeting, you made insinuations that I said this and I said that. And then we had a conversation at the fire department and you admitted that that was taken off the record, but you insinuated that I said these things at different meetings. And I just want to let you know mm -hmm. that whatever you, you insinuated at the last meeting, 
or no, it was two meetings ago, was not said by Paul Przybylinski because I, you said it was at an ARP meeting, and I had never attended an ARP meeting except for one last week. So I just want to clarify the record that what you said was untrue, all right? Because it was not me saying those things. And I think that when you want to in, insinuate that somebody's saying things, you need to come and have the date and in the record so it can be investigated. But I appreciate you at least admitting that I didn't say that stuff. And uh, I will... I, I take exception when somebody says I said this or I said that. Okay, Councilman Paul President Belinsky, I never stated or insinuated that you said that, those statements, and I did actually give a date in the meeting that it was set at. Uh, I, I, You did not say it, but I didn't feel that it w was appropriate to point out the person or people that did say that. The way so it was never insinuated. The way you present I said a that. council member said this. Okay. The way you what I stated was that. I said two council members had statements and I read the statements exactly how they said them at the meeting. I never insinuated it was you. Okay. Well that's in the record. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Anything else, President? Uh, okay. I have one question. Yes, sir. What would be a special incident? What would be a special incident? Oh, I'm sorry. Let me see if it's. Uh... You have to give me the incident specifically. It doesn't. I, I can look it up, but it doesn't say actually what it is. Normally classified as a special incident, like cat in the tree or something. I don't know. I'd have to look it up. I don't. I don't want to make assumptions. There's there's like nine different categories that we put our reports under. So all it does, all it says, a special type of incident, and then slash other. So it could be anything, but I can I can find out. I was just speaking. Okay, uh, Councilman President. Okay. Yeah, Chief. One more question: With the use of Narcan? Yes, sir. Is it up? Is it down? I, I had a feeling it? somebody was going to ask that, and I'm trying to remember. I don't. Well, since I'm really concerned, you know, with the use of that, because that tells me that there is drug issues. People are overdosing nah. and something that has to be looked into. I must have cleaned my folder out here, but I believe that is down. I want to say some of the numbers that I've been reporting are 10 or above. So I'll look at my records okay. tomorrow. All right. Well, okay. Then just for next month or when, when you're coming to the next presentation, can you bring like a bar graph sure. where we're at month to month? Yep. For the, for the right, yep. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Any other uh, city officers or department heads? Mayor? Oh, Mr. Shin. Good evening, Council. Ed Shin, Superintendent of the Parks. I'm here because you requested that I give you a progress report on the special purchase at Patriot Park and the fencing. Swenson Field, the fence posts have been reset. There are some bad spots of fence to be removed. We are awaiting a new fence to be woven in, new fencing material to be woven in, and we hope to have it up and running this weekend. Banwork and Doyle Field, Doyle Field is the one that had the dangerous backstop. The home run fencing has been dropped. The contractor is resetting and replacing poles starting tomorrow. We will be using these fields this weekend. This is not going to be an issue, however, as we will be using the short fence to shrink the fields for the younger players, and no one will be near the permanent fencing. The completion of Banwert and Doyle should be next week, as well as Karstens and Larocco, weather depending. I would think that this whole project should be complete in a matter of two weeks, weather depending. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Sheehan? Uh, Councilman Simmons. I'd just like to thank you for doing such a great job with uh, Westcott Park. Well, thank you, Mr. Simmons. Uh, sanitary District should be patted on the back. We started out that project when you requested it last year, but Sanitary District has been taking over the maintenance of that park, and they are doing a great job. You're right. 
Thank you, sir. Thank you, counsel. Thank you. Do have uh, one online, uh, Chief Forker. Uh, good evening, President, council members. Uh, sorry for my absence. I'm uh, down in India for some training this week. Uh, just wanted to update on our, our applicant processes that we have going on. Uh, back in January, we conducted a, an applicant testing in which we had 17 applicants. Um, those applic We did an expedited process. So those applicants have come to, I wouldn't say come to fruition, but just waiting for a local pension board meeting. But out of those 17, we were able to um, give or offers to three of those have passed uh, everything. So again, we're just waiting for a local pension board meeting, which should be happening soon to uh, to get those office, three uh, new officers hired. Um, of the testing we conducted in March, we had 12 applications, six of which passed and are currently in background. Those are being finished up and they'll be going to um, per for physical and psychological. Um, obviously, this is just a small task right now, or a small dent or a small, I would say, relief, I guess, in our big dent that we have. Um, we want to thank the council for their support recently and working on some negotiations with our uh, Dunes Lodge 75 negotiation team. Um, and we look forward to their continued support of the police department as we uh, tackle this battle of uh, getting the full staff. So again, I just wanted to thank the council and give them a quick update on some of those processes. And uh, we're working hard to, uh, to get the full staff and uh, would appreciate your continued support as we move forward. Thank you, Chief. Uh, any questions for Chief Parker, uh, Councilman Simmons? Yeah, Chief, just refresh our memory. How many officers are presently in the Academy? We have six that graduate at the end of the month, uh, April 28th. Uh, so they'll be coming back. Uh, they did do a few months of FTO. Um, so we're looking to have them cut loose uh, on their own here and by, by summertime. So we're looking forward for that little bit of sigh, sigh of relief. I'd say, let me give a, I would say a bad news update. Um, we did have an officer uh, submit their two week resignation um last week so that is very effective this week um again uh unfortunately losing them to another department the officer did not indicate which department but just that um they were offering a better opportunity for her thank you any other questions for chief forker yeah chief forker councilman don perblinski so with the uh three that are graduating from the uh, academy and the six that have graduated from the academy, that brings uh, up to nine, correct? So how many officers would we still be shorthanded? Well, what you said. Six are actually graduating the academy. Three haven't been hired yet. They were just given conditional offers. Oh, okay, and, okay. And they've... Uh, completed all the whole process now except our local michigan city pension board we just have to basically accept them into our pension fund um just a formality on that end but okay uh, the, with, the the six, six, with the six graduating what does that bring the number of two of active officers uh, <laughs> i guess um i would rather not say you know i would say our current number. okay yeah, um, publicly, you know, obviously we can, you know, be more than happy to give you that number. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, when, when it comes to public safety, we don't, you know, we want to rest assured that the cities or the citizens of Michigan City, we are fully staffed or on each shift. We have our all of our districts and all of our areas covered. Uh, you know, unfortunately, we've been paying overtime to to do a lot of that, but uh, we have been uh, fully staffed on each shift. Um, but again, we're just looking to uh, get those officers out on the street here by June. Um, it'll help, uh, but again, uh, it's just some young officers as well. So, okay, thank you. Thank you, Chief. Any other questions? All right, thank you, Chief. Thank you. Are there any other city officers or departments? Uh, Ms. Nidal, petitions? There are no petitions. 
communications. Correspondence was received in the clerk's office on April 6th from Councilwoman Ziggis requesting to read the proclamation in its entirety regarding Arbor Day. Councilwoman. Thank you. Um, this is a pro proclamation from the city of Michigan City, Indiana. Whereas in 1872, J. Sterling Morton proposed to the Nebraska Board of Agriculture that a special day be set aside for the planting of trees. And this holiday, Arbor Day, was first observed with the planting of more than 1 million trees across the plains of Nebraska. And whereas 2023 marks the 151st anniversary of this holiday, and Arbor Day is now observed by across the nation and throughout the world, and whereas trees are one of Mother Nature's greatest renewable resources, giving us wood for construction, fuel for fires, and paper to correspond. And whereas trees are a friend to earth and its inhabitants by reducing the erosion of precious topsoil via wind and water, trees absorb atmospheric harming carbon dioxide while releasing life-sustaining oxygen, and trees moderate the temperature, all the while providing a habitat for a myriad of wildlife. And whereas trees, wherever they are planted, are a source of spiritual joy and renewal, trees increase property values, enhance the vitality of business areas while beautifying the overall look of our community. And whereas the city of Michigan City is most fortunate to have a dedicated members of our tree board working effortlessly to provide a cleaner, healthier, and more tree-filled Michigan City, now, therefore, I, Mayor Dwayne Perry of Michigan City, Indiana, do hereby proclaim Saturday, April 29th, 2023, as Arbor Day in the city of Michigan City and urge all citizens to support efforts to protect our trees and wildlands and further urge all citizens to plant the tree in the benefit of this and future generations. Dated this 18th day of January, 2023. Thank you. The 18th day of January. Um, yes, they wrote the proclamation early, but the date is April 29th, and uh, we are celebrating with, with the uh, Earth Extravaganza at Krieger. And um, the tree board's giving away, we have a thousand trees to give away there and the next week at the farmer's market the first day. Thank you, Councilwoman. Yes. Okay. In accordance with ordinance number 4538, the clerk's office received on April 10th a accident report regarding a Michigan City um, police vehicle. There are no resolutions this evening. Ms. Nilo, can you please read our first ordinance on a second reading by title only? An ordinance on second reading by title only, creating section 2-419 in the Michigan City Municipal Code to establish criteria for utilization of public safety lit funds. And this is introduced by Ms. Deitch and Mr. Paul. Can you comments from the sponsor? Yes, I move the table indefinitely until we um, get through with uh, conversations and negotiations with the police and fire. I'll second that. We have a motion by Councilwoman Dice to the table indefinitely and a second by Councilman Paul Presbolinski. Ms. Not upon the vote, please. Mr. Don Presbolinski? Aye. Mr. Simmons? Aye. Ms. Jagas? Aye. Mr. Paul Presbolinski? Aye. Ms. Tolman? Aye. Mr. Dabney? Aye. Mr. Fitzpatrick? Aye. Mr. Mack? Aye. And Ms. Deitch? Aye. We have nine in favor and no one opposed. Thank you, Ms. Not. Can you please read our next ordinance on second reading? An ordinance on second reading by title only, creating Article 10 and Chapter 22 entitled Rental Inspection Program. And this is introduced with, by Ms. Jagas. Any comments from the sponsor? Um, yes. So we had some, we had input from lots of city departments and people, and we needed to make some changes in the ordinance. And so this is why the, the uh, workshop was canceled last week. So we did make some changes. The most specific ones are that the rental uh, registration fee is now $5, and then there is no fee for inspection or reinspection, and that the registration will be due by October 1st every year. Those are the major changes, and uh, I'm going to ask the council if we could please table this until after we do a workshop. So I, I planned a workshop Monday, April 24th at 5 p.m. right here. 
so that we can get more input from people and see where we you know might have issues or some questions so if 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 you would like i would like to table this until the next council meeting i have a motion to table on the floor is that a second second the motion uh table by councilwoman jigas and seconded by council uh councilman mack <laughs> miss nile want to vote please Mr. Simmons? Aye. Ms. Jagas? Aye. Mr. Paul Kresbolinski? Nay. Ms. Tillman? Nay. Mr. Dabney? Aye. Mr. Fitzpatrick? Nay. Mr. Mack? Aye. Ms. Deitch? Aye. And Mr. Don Kresbolinski? Aye. We have six in favor and three opposed. This ordinance will be tabled until our next meeting. Ms. Lytle, can you please read our next ordinance on second reading by title only? An ordinance on second reading by title only, amending ordinance number 4650, commonly known as the 2023 salary ordinance to establish a monthly compensation for members of the Michigan City Board of Public Works and Safety. And this is introduced by Mr. Paul Presbolinski. Any comments from the sponsor? Yes. Um, Mr. Fitzpatrick, I'd like to table this indefinitely. We have a motion to table indefinitely, or is there a second? I'll second it. Thank you. A motion by Councilman Paul Presbolinski to table indefinitely and seconded by Councilwoman Deitch. Ms. Nyla, on the vote, please. Ms. Jagas? Aye. Mr. Paul Presbolinski? Aye. Ms. Tillman? Aye. Mr. Dabney? Aye. Mr. Fitzpatrick? Aye. Mr. Matt? Aye. Ms. Deitch? Aye. Mr. Don Kreslinski? Aye. And Mr. Simmons? Aye. We have nine in favor and no one opposed. Thank you, Ms. Nyla. Can you please read our next ordinance on second reading by title only? An ordinance on second reading by title only. Amending ordinance. To, I just read. <laughs> I'm going to read it again. An ordinance on second reading by title only. An ordinance of the Common Council of the City of Michigan City, Indiana, approving amending the Beach Walk Phase 3B PUD planned unit development. And this is introduced by Mr. Don Presbolinski, Mr. Dabney, and Ms. Jagas. Any comments from the sponsor? Uh, Mr. President, we'd also like to have a third reading on this uh, ordinance this evening, but I would like to make a couple comments. Uh, I know we talked about this ordinance. Uh, at the last meeting, and there was no, as far as I can see, no issues whatsoever with the development of this uh, project. Also, uh, I know that we talked, and the developer talked about, Mr. Willoughby did, the attorney, about the how the facing of the units are, that the front and the back will look alike. And that along Washington Park Boulevard, there's not going to be any parking whatsoever allowed. Each complex will have a parking garage and a driveway. Uh, I guess two or four cars would be accompanied there. And any overflow parking would be, then be directed to the main parking lot of the uh, beach walk development. And there's also a area of uh, forestry and trees, I think it's 4.5 acres, somewhere to that effect, that that area there will not be touched and it'll be left alone. So I, just my own personal viewing of this and taking a look at the area and taking a ride out there, I think it's a great project for the area and I think we could uh, move forward with it, both second and third uh, on it tonight, let the development get started. Thank you. Any other comments from the uh, sponsors? Yes. Yeah. Councilman Dabney. Yeah. And uh, just to reiterate uh, what we said, what was said at the last meeting, this came out of the uh, planning commission of a unanimous uh, favorable vote. Thank you, Councilman. Any other comments from the sponsor? I second uh, moving to third reading. Was that a motion? He made a motion, but he had comments after. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. We had a motion by Councilman Don Presbolinski to uh, have third reading this evening and second by Councilwoman Deitch. Ms. Nyla, on the vote, please. Mr. Paul Presbolinski? Aye. Ms. Tillman? Aye. Mr. Dabney? Aye. 
Mr. Fitzpatrick. Aye. Mr. Matt. Aye. Ms. Deitch. Aye. Mr. Don Pesplonsky. Aye. Mr. Simmons. Aye. Ms. Davis. Aye. We have nine in favor. Okay, any comments from the public? Any comments from the public? Comments from the council? Councilman Paul Presley. Councilman Deitch. Okay. All right, this uh, ordinance will be held over for third reading. Ms. Nyla, could you please read this ordinance on third reading? An ordinance on third reading by title only. An ordinance of the Common Council, the City of Michigan City, Indiana, approving amending the Beachwalk Phase 3B PUD planned unit development. And this is introduced by Mr. Don Presopolinski, Mr. Dabney, and Ms. Chairs. Any comments from the sponsor? Any comments from the public? Any comments from the public? Comments from the council. Motion, motion to, to approve. approve. Uh, we Report. Have a motion to approve by Councilman Dabney, Don, uh, Councilman Don Presbylinski, and second by Councilman yeah, Dabney. That's fine. Ms. Nyla, on the vote, please. Ms. Tillman? Aye. Mr. Dabney? Aye. Mr. Fitzpatrick? Aye. Mr. Mayor? Aye. Ms. Deitch? Aye. Mr. Don Presbylinski? Aye. Mr. Simmons? Aye. Ms. Dragas? Aye. Mr. Paul Presbylinski? Aye. Ms. Nine in favor and no one opposed. Ordinance is passed. Ms. Nine, could you please read our next ordinance on second reading by title only? An ordinance on second reading by title only. An ordinance establishing a fund for specific maintenance and repair of brick streets within the city of Michigan City, Indiana. And this is introduced by Mr. Um, Paul Krzyzewski. Any comments from the sponsor? Um, yes, I, uh, after discussion with uh, legal staff and uh, Critiquing the uh, initial ordinance that there needs to be some language change, and and I would like to table this till our next regular meeting. We have a motion to table. Support by Councilman Presbylinski and a second by Councilman Councilwoman Deitch. Mr. Dyle, on the vote, please. Mr. Dabney. Aye. Mr. Fitzpatrick. Aye. Mr. Mack. Aye. Ms. Deitch. Aye. Mr. Don Presbylinski. Aye. Mr. Simmons. Aye. Ms. Jagas. Aye. Mr. Paul Presbylinski. Aye. And Ms. Tillman. Aye. We have nine in favor and no one opposed. Thank you, Ms. Knight. Thank you. Ordinance will be held over to our next meeting. Could you please read our next ordinance by, on second reading by title only? An ordinance on second reading by title only. An ordinance creating a permanent sidewalk fund for sidewalk repairs for the city of Michigan City, Indiana. And this is introduced by Mr. Paul Presbylinski, Ms. Tillman, Ms. Deitch, Mr. Fitzpatrick, and Mr. Don Presbylinski. Any comments from the sponsors? Yeah, Mr. Uh, President, I'd like to make a comment on this particular ordinance. Uh, this has certainly been needed for quite a while. I know that during budget process time, you know, there might be 100,000 put into it, 200,000 put into it, whatever. It seems to me what's left over in the budget, we'll put that into sidewalks. But the more and more, well, I, let me go back, that back in 20, that have been two years ago, yeah, before we got into this issue with our City engineer, uh, we haven't had sidewalk work done for two years now. And I know I turned in a list, Councilman Paul Prisbolinski turned in a list, Councilwoman Tracy Tillman turned in a list for sidewalks to be fixed. And not one sidewalk has been fixed yet on, on any of those lists. And I know that the list existed because I talked to the uh, engineer about it. But Michigan City has to get serious about making its neighborhoods and improving the neighborhoods. Uh, even down the parks, uh, Washington Park, there are sidewalks down there that are in, uh, in, in need of repair. Uh, you know, I look, I live on Gardena Street. I see people pushing uh, strollers, walking with their young children down to Gardena Playground. And I know that there's a number of sidewalks that need to be repaired on Gardena Street. And I think a progressive city is a city that has walkable neighborhoods. 
because people love to get out and walk. People love to get out and ride bikes. People love to get their families out and go for stroller walks and take their young children for walks. And Michigan City needs to go in that direction. We're worried about putting, you know, gigantic, you know, big progress north of 11th Street. Well, we need to take care of the whole neighborhoods and make them all compatible so everybody in Michigan City can enjoy whether you live on Barker Ave, whether you live on Fulton Street, whether you live on South Ohio Street. We need to get this, uh, this funds, this money in this fund so that we know every year we can turn in sidewalk lists and hopefully those lists will be worked on and repaired. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Any comments from the other sponsors? Councilman Don uh, Paul Presbyteski. Uh, I uh, I do think that this uh, ordinance should have been uh, worked on years ago, and I think that I I just wanted to get it start moving forward and get some money in this uh, fund. And so I'm working out some language here and I want to include everyone that's sponsoring on the list. So I did take out some language that was, uh, that our controller commented on and we're, I'm gonna add some uh, additional language, but this ordinance was, uh, researched by the legal department and it was critiqued by the legal department because we're changing the code and it has to be codified. So anything that I want to change, I got to get it through the legals. And that's what, that's what I'm doing. And we did, I didn't have time. It's my issue on getting this to correct language in here. So this money cannot be used for any other thing is only to be used for neighborhood sidewalks. And that's where we're at because of what happened here with the project on uh, on the uh, North End, on using the sidewalk money, depleting the sidewalk money to use on, on the North End in the TIF district. So to me, that they have money, $100,000 isn't that much, but it's big in the neighborhoods because uh, there are some sidewalks, there's no doubt about it. And I got into this when I was on the city council back in the 90s that there was not a program established, but it was a voluntary program and that it was a 50-50 program by the city that the city paid half in the, uh, homeowner paid half. And then what happened is that it got too expensive for contractors to bid on this job because they wanted a million dollars in insurance. So a lot of the contractors dropped out and didn't even bid on the sidewalk work. And then he went higher uh, with, with, uh, a bigger, bigger firm that had that amount of insurance to uh, cover it. But at this time, I'd like to make a motion. I don't want to beleaguer this any longer than I have to at this moment. I would like to make a motion to table this to our next meeting so I can get the language uh, straight and everybody gets a copy of it prior to the next meeting. Second. Thank you. Motion to table by Councilman Don Presbyteski. I mean, Paul Presbyteski until our next meeting at second by Councilwoman Deitch. Ms. Nyla, on the vote, please. Mr. Fitzpatrick. Aye. Mr. Barrett. Aye. Ms. Deitch. Aye. Mr. Don Presbyteski. Aye. Mr. Simmons. Aye. Ms. Vegas. Aye. Mr. Paul Presbyteski. Aye. Ms. Tillman. Aye. And Mr. Dabby. Aye. We have nine in favor and no one opposed. Thank you, Ms. Nyla. Can you please read our last ordinance by title only? An ordinance on second reading by title only, an order, ordinance establishing a fund for subsidizing sewer lateral repairs with the city of Michigan City, Indiana. And this is introduced by Mr. Paul Prosmolinski, Ms. Tillman, and Ms. Snow. 
Nelson Deitch. Any comments from the sponsors? I, uh, I would just like to... Your, mic, your mic's not on. Counselor excuse Trump, me. Trump. Excuse me, President Fitzpatrick. I introduced this ordinance because of a lot of people having uh, sewer problems. And what I mean by lateral sewer, it's your connection to the main, which is on uh, city. It's on the city right away, or it could be on the easement. And the way it is right now is that the sanitary district passed a ordinance and I have the document here back in 2017 when there was they were trying to enact a um, stormwater fee on us. But any but anyway, the way the ordinance reads is that the homeowner has to pay half of the uh, bill for work on the easements. Say there's a collapse sewer, and a lot of these sewers are uh, the uh, tile sewers that usually have the problem. But some people are paying an exorbitant amount of money. One bill that I that I saw from a lady on Pearl Street, her share of the bill is twelve thousand dollars, and it I just it's um unbelievable. But anyway. That's why I introduced this and I got, got to make some language changes and I want to table this also till our next meeting so that we can get this, the language straightened out and move forward on this. And this is a good thing because it'll help, it'll help the residents. And uh, I also took out the language that, uh, the controller uh, didn't specifically want the uh, verbiage in there about uh, the general fund. Thank you. So Council. that's going to be on. We have a motion to table by Councilman Paul President. Is there a second? Second. Uh, we have a second by Councilman Don President. It's not upon the vote, please. Mr. Mack. Aye. Ms. Deitch. Aye. Mr. Don Kozwolinski. Aye. Mr. Simmons. Aye. Ms. Jagus. Aye. Mr. Paul Kozwolinski. Aye. Ms. Tillman? Aye. Mr. Dabney? Aye. And Mr. Fitzpatrick? Oh, aye. We have nine in favor and no one opposed. Ordinance is tabled. Uh, yeah, Mr. President, if I may, uh, since it was tabled, can I still be added as a uh, co sponsor? I'd like to be added as a co sponsor for this ordinance. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, new business? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh. Can I have a, just a quick question? Uh, with, with some of these, are there going to be any workshops or anything, or are you just changing the language and send it out to us? Uh, I, I'm going to change the language and get it out to you. And if, if you if you want a workshop, I'll I'm, have a, I'm just I, asking I'll what? have a workshop on I'm all fine. three of them at one time. I'm fine. You know, and uh, I I would like to discuss it here and have an exception on the time because I think it's important for the public you know, to be involved with the discussions that we have, because these are, these are very important. And that's why I brought them to the table. You know, it's just, I really felt bad for this one lady. Um, she's trying to retire, you know, and she's got a $12,000 bill. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, new business. We have nine unfinished business. Mayor Perry is requesting the advice and consent of the Michigan City Common Council regarding his appointment of Gigi McCabe, McCabe Miley to the Michigan City Historic Review Board term began immediately and expired March 15, 2026. Uh, Ms. Snyder, on the vote. Do you, we need a motion? No, oh, I guess we need a motion. I, I, I move that we accept and provide the advice and consent for Gigi McCabe Miley. Motion to so accept by Councilwoman. Uh, Deitch and seconded by Councilwoman Tillman. Ms. Knight up on the vote, please. Ms. Deitch. Aye. Mr. Don Kozlowski. Aye. Mr. Simmons. Aye. Ms. Jagus. Aye. Mr. Paul Kozlowski. 
Aye. Ms. Tillman? Aye. Mr. Dabney? Aye. Mr. Fitzpatrick? Aye. And Mr. Matt? Aye. We have nine in favor and no one opposed. Congratulations, Ms. McCabe, Lee Lee. I hope I'm saying that right. <laughs> uh, next, we have a vote. Um, Mayor Perry is requesting the advice and consent of the Michigan City Common Council regarding his appointment of Carolyn Miller to the Michigan City Cemetery Board, replacing Paul Foreman. Term will begin immediately and expire December 31st, 2023. Is there a motion? Yes, I move that we um, accept the advice and consent of Carolyn Miller to the Michigan City Cemetery Board. But we have a motion by Councilwoman Dyche and second by Councilman Paul Presbonski. It's not up on the vote, please. Mr. Don Presbonski? Aye. Mr. Simmons? Aye. Ms. Jagas? Aye. Mr. Paul Presbonski? Aye. Ms. Tillman? Aye. Mr. Dabney? Aye. Mr. Fitzpatrick? Aye. Mr. Mm -hmm. Mack? Aye. And Ms. Deitch? Ms. Deitch. Oh, aye. Your, your mic's not up. <laughs> in my aye. favor and no one opposed. Congratulations, Ms. Miller. Uh, nominations. The council has the following an appointment to the Michigan City Social Status of African American Males. Term expired February 15, 2023. All are one year terms. Uh, incumbent vacant ministerial site association. Do you have any letters in, Ms. Snyder? No, we have not received any correspondence. But I did reach out. I said I would, and they um, said they will get something to the clerk's office. Thank you. Okay, uh, moving on to a public comment. Um, the rules for a couple public comment. If anyone wishes to speak, they must come to the mic, uh, state their name, address for the record, and they have three minutes to speak. Any comments from the public? Hi, Ernie Hollahan, 302 Gladys Street. Uh, to start with, I want to apologize for the last meeting. I was unaware that my left hearing aid was completely gone. I just received a new one this past, past week, so they're both working. And I can hear you guys good. Otherwise, I can't hear anything without hearing aids. But I'm still wanting to oppose this landlord thing. I know you're going to hold a workshop. I did show up for the last one, and it was canceled on me, and I didn't wasn't aware of it. Unfortunately, me and another lady showed up, and I was informed by the uh, inspector that it had been canceled. Nobody put a note on the door or anything. She finally said she was going to do it, so that's how I found out that it canceled. So... I will be here next next meeting. And uh, I see in the paper today that you're receiving more funds from the government for paving, I hope. I hope they add more to what they've already scheduled to be paved because a lot of streets really need it bad. And I, I really hope they add, especially Pod Road. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Holland. And any comments from the public? No. My name is Alicia Ortiz. My address is 6555 Wildflower in Portage. And I'm here as a representative for the state of Indiana real estate investors. And I just wanted to make a, co a comment. Um, Councilman Paul. Sorry, I can't pronounce your last name. Chris Belinsky had made a comment about affordable housing. And I will say from working with municipalities across the state, as soon as a rent landlord inspection is passed, people put their houses up for sale. It creates more, more uh, problems for affordable housing because there's either selling, they're selling them on rock or they're selling them to big corporations from out of town. 
There's one city not far from here. The day after they passed the inspection, there were 350 packages, which amounted to approximately 2,000 houses that went up for sale and on the market. They were all sold to out-of-state investors, and now they're having really, is really big issues. There's enough ordinances and enough state laws that are on the books that that municipalities don't need these type of inspections. I mean, if you if you need to know the state laws, I can give them to you. I work closely with the laws from Indiana, and. Um, I am glad that you got the laws straight in regards to what you can charge for rental and uh, rental registration. But also, please know that any money collected from this has to go into a special account, and it can only be used to go back into the program. It cannot ever go into a general fund. And there's, I, I mean, I could get into other areas of that, but um, you're going to have a big problem here with out-of-town investors if you, I mean, not that there are good out-of-town investors, but I would work with your investors you have here. You know who the bad ones are, and you know who the good ones are, and you have a code enforcement, you have a health department, and you have building inspectors, and I I think you should use them all. Thank you. Thank you. If if possible, could you forward that information you were re, uh, referring to to our city clerk's office? In regard, which part? The state laws that you were you were uh, referencing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you're giving them to me. Thank you. But that's not all of them. But you know what? I'll send them to you. I have them on me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Rodney McCormick, 617 Union Street, also the president of the Michigan City Housing Authority. Um, I've been seeing mailers or placards coming to people's doors. Just heard from this young lady, um, the real estate company she, she represents. Affordable housing in Michigan City is over. HUD knows it, but people here, I know we, it's election time, we all want to get votes. There will be no more affordable housing in Michigan City. Quickest property goes up, people from Illinois come and buy it, and it's over. Um, I had one placard that even talked about bringing low-income housing back to Michigan City. That will never happen. HUD is not in the business of bringing back any projects in any city in Michigan City. All you have to do is ask your attorney. He will tell you the same thing. He's involved with HUD uh, more so than I ever will be. This is not gonna happen. What will happen is Section 8 vouchers. That's the only thing we have left. And then they have a market value set on those Section 8 vouchers. Right now, landlords have exceeded that, that, um, that value. Sadly, people in this city are gonna have to find places to live. Um, Sean, you brought it up, gentrification, or how you pronounce it is, it's for real. It's over with. People here, quit believing what you read on these placards. Quit listening to these candidates who are running for office, who have not lived in our city, who don't want to tell you the truth. I want to win my election bad, but not to the point where I will mislead you. We need to partner up with the Michigan City Housing Authority and try to make fair market value homes and not low-income housing. I um, also want to just talk about going back to the past again. It's election time. A lot of people listen to me. A lot of people don't like me, but the truth of the matter is we cannot afford to go backwards. We owe it to Officer Henderson, Richardson, Rodriguez, and Shaparsky, and also Mark Swistek not to give Ron Mayer another chance in office. Those officers laid their life on the line for us. None of them are here no more. 
All of them are going off to another place. They're not here. We got these candidate forums where we cannot have true debates. It's sad. These officers are no, here, no longer here. And it was good officers. And now the crime is so out of control right now, we're going to have to bring outside agencies in to help us. This is what happens when we get dictators in the office and people that don't want to be held accountable for their actions. We cannot have this going on in our city. And I heard that there's individuals who don't like when I get up here and speak and say, you can come up and rebut me or you can come to my home, 617 Union Street. We can debate all day, but the facts are the facts. Your time has expired, Mr. McCormick. I appreciate you. Please get out and vote. Early voting has been miserable right now. Please get out and vote. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McCormick. Uh, Tommy Palavic, 1316 Ohio Street. I'd like to cite section uh, 16.08. Section G of the Michigan City Municipal Code. Tents shall not be erected, used, or maintained on any lot except small tents that are customarily used for recreation purposes and are located on the same lot as a dwelling. Every use of tents for religious, amusement, and recreation business or manufacturing purpose shall not be permitted when a permit has been issued by the enforcement official in accordance with provisions set forth in Article 10, uh, Article 26. In other words, nobody has come to Michigan City and set up a tent out in the woods or anywhere else that is prohibited here. It's not like you see when you turn on the news and these people are setting up living underneath the free expressway overpass in these ice fishing tents. Inglewood Barbie does not live here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kalavi. Comments from the public. Good evening, Matthew Babcock, FOP Dunes Lodge 75, Corporal Michigan City Police Department. I just wanted to reiterate what Chief Porker said and that we're very appreciative of the City Council and the Labor Relations Committee in having the talks with us over wages uh, and to emphasize that we need to try to get this done as quickly as possible. We have our next hiring event coming up on May 20th and uh, the sooner that we can have these wages updated, the sooner we can put that out to potential applicants and fill the vacancies we have. Uh, we have several officers who are still actively pursuing other police careers, and uh, hopefully some updated wages can help us uh, retain those officers as well. And again, thank you. Thank you, officer. Thank you for your service. Kathy Stransky, 223 East Barker Ave. Um, a week, want to be a week ago last weekend, that I was down at the beach on Saturday evening. It was starting to get dark. There was a lot of people down. There was a beautiful night and a bunch of cars came in. There must have been four or five of them. And they started doing that donut stuff down at the far end of the beach. They were rolling their cars and doing donuts and squealing their tires and making all kinds of commotion. And people with kids were walking down there. I, I just wonder if for the summer on the weekends, is there a possibility that a Michigan City police officer could be actually stationed in that park for his shift at least from two to ten because it closes then but it was crazy and when the police department did come people did call the police and they did come down but by then the cars were gone they only come down and make a bunch of ruckus for maybe two to three minutes at the most but they're they're spinning their cars all over the place i mean thank you Thank you, Mrs. Stransky. Any comments from the public? Any other comments from the public? Public comment is closed. Comments from the council. Councilman President Lansky. Uh, Mr. President, yeah, you know, a couple of meetings ago, I had uh, inquired about the lit money and whether it could be used for the, uh, the kennels, yeah, for the animal control department. Because we, we have an issue out there and we're getting bids on uh, building a new kennel uh, for the animals out there. That thing is totally outdated. Anyway, uh, from the attorney, he, he gave me a, uh, and I'm going to give every council member a copy of what I got here. Uh, yeah, attorney Harris gave this before the meeting. Anyway, I'm just going to read about 
animal control. Who said if animal control is run through the police department in an effort to preserve public peace and order, then an argument can be made that this is an end. This is an allowable expense. Okay, there is no relevant case law regarding this usage. So I know that we gave ARP money towards that project, but now we can also use lip money towards that project, and we shouldn't skimp on trying to save a thousand here, a thousand there. We should make something state of the art, have a nice open area for these animals to run in so that we can and restroom facilities for everyone to use and uh, so that Michigan City can be proud of what we have for the Animal Control Department. So I'll give every council member a piece of uh, uh, copy that. Uh, one more thing in regards to the uh, Washington Park uh, issue, and to me, uh, that that is an issue, and it's becoming an issue quickly now that the weather is getting nicer. And I have uh, seen some of those instances, not this year, but in past years I've seen it, uh, what's going on down there. And of course, always the first first reaction is to uh, close the park at 8.30, 9 o'clock. Nobody from the public can come down to the park. Well, see, I have a different view on that because we all pay taxes to use that park. So why should we let a couple thugs push us out from enjoying beautiful sunsets with our family and, and everything else that goes along with going to the beach in the evening with your family. So what, what I'm suggesting and the police department and the mayor can do with it what they want, because I know that we can get the state police to come to Michigan City in a, uh, I believe they call it a mutual agreement or whatever the particular term is, at no cost to Michigan City. And put a state trooper officer down there in Washington Park from five o'clock in the evening till 10 o'clock at night, seven days a week, and bring all this nonsense to an end. And when it'll end is when somebody gets seriously injured down there or loses a loved one, and then we'll all come up with solutions at that time. I've had it with Washington Park. I've seen it year after year where it gets shut down. You can't enjoy it, and that's not fair. Any of us on the council, any of you folks in the audience, or even to the police officers that have to go down there and put up with this nonsense day after day after day. So I just wanted to make that comment, and hopefully the, uh, the police department and the administration are making uh, recommendations to bring this under control. And finally, I would like to thank a gentleman that has worked for the Michigan City Golf Course for 32 years. His name's John Marshall, and what he's retiring at, his position is the, on the golf course, you have a greenskeeper, and he's the head gentleman that takes care of the grass and the greens and the tees and what have you, and keeps it looking beautiful. Well, this year he has decided to retire after 32 years, and I just want to wish him uh, well in his retirement. He's been a great, a great city employee. He's coming up with great ideas for the golf course and has kept that golf course immaculate over the years that he's been here. So I just want to thank John for all his hard work and effort and dedication in Michigan City. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, Councilwoman Tillman. Um, thank you, Madam, uh, Mr. President. Um, I have a PSA on behalf of the LaPorte County Prosecutor's Office for the Child Support Division. Um, to all custodial, out, I'm going to read this out loud, um, and this is pertaining to child support for those who have a monetary obligation to pay child support and for those who receive child support payments. 
to all custodial and non-custodial parties, Indiana's Child Support Bureau is in the process of transitioning to a new child support case management system. The transition period to the new system began in January of 2023 and is expected to be completed by the end of 2023. As the new system is rolled out across the state, please be aware of the following information. What is INVEST, the Indiana Verification Enforcement Support Tracking System? INVEST is the state's new modernized child support case management system. Is INVEST available statewide? The new system is being rolled out to the clerks and prosecutor office across the state in phases. It will be available in Clay County, Vandenberg County, and Howard County. LaPorte County actually was um, is in phase three. Um, these counties starting in January 2023. Updates about rollouts to other counties will be made available at a later date. What do custodial parties and non-custodial parties need to do? During the transition process, both custodial parties and non-custodial parents should note the following. Custodial parties, you will continue to receive child support funds as you currently receive them. However, if you currently receive a physical check from your local county clerk, those payments will be sent from the Indiana State Central Collection Unit, also known as INSCU. Once your case is switched to INVEST, once the first check has been issued from INSCU, you will need to choose from direct deposit or debit card for, rece for receipt of future payments. If you are not already set up to receive funds via direct deposit or debit card. Non-custodial parents, continue to make timely payments and regular review paycheck stubs to verify the withholding amounts is correct. If withholdings are incorrect, contact your local 4D child support office or the Child Support Bureau Kids Line for private case, for private cases, which means if you had a child support order done pro se or private counsel. For easy payments, you can make, um, for easy payments, making options, um, you can go to the www.in.gov backslash DCS backslash child dash support backslash make a payment. All parties during each rollout period, there may be a slight delay in your payment processing. The rollout periods are not are to be determined. More information will be available at a later date. And as that information becomes available, I will like to be able to share that publicly with you all. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman, for that information. Uh, comments from the council. Councilman President Lesky. Um to the uh, people that were here or, or people who came to uh, discuss this uh, inspection program, I just want to uh, let you know that the reason I voted nay to table is so that the people that came here this evening could speak. And I I wish that that would have pa passed so we can at least let the public in, enter their comments. Now, uh, on uh, the other day on Monday, I was at uh, the Board of Works meeting and we were discussing uh, a ditch. And at that meeting, the uh, mayor, what I felt was a, a, a attack uh, myself directly by name and Commissioner Tom Kavalik on uh, saying that we're beating a dead horse on sewers and drainage problems in the city of Michigan City. So I took that as, in other words, that he's not in favor of doing any of these projects. That's, that's the way I took that statement. But also at that meeting, when it came to the uh, public comment section, the chair decided to impose restrictions on us that we couldn't use it as a public uh, political forum and, you know, 
whatever, whatever else the description was. And I, I'll tell you that I really disagreed, and I told the chair that I disagreed with that, that she did not call out the that the chair did not call out the mayor that he was out of order taking personal shots at us. And also that <clears throat> under that forum or trying to stifle any kind of debate, I reminded her that this is America and that we have a right to petition the government and to have comments at public meetings. So I'm going I'm to tell you something's wrong here. Something's really wrong in this in this whole picture of how the public gets treated. And I I want I just got to tell you that this is way this is this is just isn't correct. And uh, I hope to see everybody. We're going to schedule a workshop, and I'm also uh, I talked to our attorney Harris about setting up a workshop on getting our details together on the uh, 420 acres so we can come to some type of settlement with the developers so that the taxpayers aren't on the hook for that boondoggle. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Any other comments from the council? Is there a motion? Um, move to adjourn. Good evening, everyone. Have a nice night.